UK versus US food, which is better? This is going to be a super interesting video. I do watch a lot of like American food videos and your food looks absolutely unreal. It's going to be really interesting to see what kind of comparisons we're going to have in this video and who comes out on top. Before we do jump in this, we're super close to 100,000 subscribers. Honestly, thank you to absolutely everyone that subscribed to the channel. You guys are amazing. I do also have a Patreon. If you guys want early access or extra content, link is in the description. Yeah, let's jump straight to this. I just sell British snacks around them. <laughs> I just have them all imported over. Welcome to Watch Mojo. <laughs> okay. And today we'll be pitting UK food versus oh, US I want McDonald's food now. and looking at their shocking differences. Follow me. Shocking. We'll be examining which country provides the best food overall. Okay. Restaurants to supermarkets. We'll also look at which has healthier options, is cheaper, and what's available in each country. Right. What do you think about the differences between the food found in the United States and the United Kingdom? Are there any differences we missed? Let us know in the comments. Oh, this is making me want some food now. How, how one, about McDonald's? Quality of ingredients. Right. The ingredients in food we eat very wild. Oh, this video is going to like go into the details of everything then. Depending on whether we are eating food from a package or food from a restaurant. Right. As a result, we'll be looking at the major food chains common in both countries and whether the quality of their ingredients differs widely. Okay. In 2019, food activist Vanny Hari, who also goes by the food babe online, showcased... I actually thought that was a real animal for a second then. <laughs> her research into the difference in ingredients found in packaged food items. This included Doritos, Mountain Dew, Quaker Oats, Heinz tomato ketchup, and more. She discovered that packaged food made and sold in the U.S. contained vast amounts of artificial coloring and right. flavoring. For I example, wonder that. In the United Kingdom, Mountain Dew got its bright color from beta carotene, a natural color derived from certain orange or yellow foods. Okay. In the United States, it came from yellow five. Yellow five is a petroleum-based dye called tartrazine. Most studies on- Alright, that don't sound good. Petroleum-based dye could touch a tree. <laughs> Artificial food colorings like tartrazine have shown that children who consume large doses can be negatively affected. Oh, wow. Double blind placebo controlled food challenge published in perhaps the most prestigious medical journal in the world showing artificial colors increased inattentiveness, impulsivity, and hyperactivity among young children. You may also remember when groups campaigned to have azo dicarbamonide removed from bread and subway. Yo, there's too many big words right now. I ain't gonna lie. So basically what I'm gonna take from this is uh, American food has a lot of chemicals in, more so than the UK. But you know, we all, we already knew that. We already knew that. It just tastes better. I, You know, I actually can't wait to try it myself. I actually can't. McDonald's, Wendy's, and many other major American food chains. This was in part because this chemical can also be found in yoga mats. Huh? The additive is approved by the FDA, and other companies also use it in their breads. Subway came under fire after a food blogger petitioned for its removal, noting that the chemical is also used to make yoga mats. Wait, wait, wait. So U.S. Subway bread is got the same ingredients as yoga mats? <laughs> <laughs> the campaigning by Harry to remove harmful ingredients from specific U.S. packaged food has proven successful on multiple occasions. Already? There's still a lot of work to be done in the United States. Oh, wow. And the World Health Organization has deemed it an asthmatic trigger. It causes lung issues in workers who handle it, uh, skin irritation, eye irritation. So this is a very dangerous chemical that's being used in our bread. Oh, the wow. The reason why the U.K. may fare better in this area is due to the fact that food regulations regarding artificial colorings and ingredients Bad. are generally much stricter. For right. example, in Europe alone, food companies must include warning labels if they use artificial dyes. Okay. This results in many opting not to use them as it may deter potential customers. This and other deterrents forces companies... Yeah, I'm gonna lie, I don't really... I don't really see on many foods warning labels. So, yeah, they probably just don't use them. It's to manufacture products in a more health conscious way. Right. Meaning the United Kingdom is the winner when it comes to the quality of ingredients in their food. Okay. Winner, United Kingdom. Okay. Round two. Start off good. Portion sizes. Oh. Okay, it's no we secret lose. that the United <laughs> States is known for overfilling meals in what has become known as supersized right. portions. Right. Look at that. <laughs> Look at how big that thing is. But is that the case across the board? 
Food Insider did a deep dive into several of the nation's shared fast food chains, dissecting just how big each of their standard sizes are. In every instance, the U.S. had considerably larger portion Mad. sizes per meal, both in volume oh. and weight. The chicken looks crispier as well, bro. I can't even, I can't even dump it. Yo. Look how much chicken this is. Oh, oh that's, bro, they're bigger as well. This isn't just I swear they're bigger. Fast food, as packaged foods are commonly sold in more significant gram amounts in the U.S. Right. Snickers. Better. A standard Snickers bar, for example, okay. is 52.7 grams in the United States and huh? 48 grams in the UK. Sometimes there are even comically large editions available in the United States. What is that? What is that? What? Is that? <laughs> Yo, what is going on, bro? This is one pound, or roughly. 453.6 grams. That isn't entirely a good thing. That's not a lot of small States ones. The United States ranks significantly higher than the United Kingdom in the percentage of obese adults living in the country. Well, yeah, but I'm pretty sure the UK is catching up. I'm pretty sure I've seen a stat where the UK, like, we're not far behind. One in eight Americans rely on food stamps. The stocks of Taco Bell. Wait, huh? Country. While one in eight Americans rely on food stamps. The stocks of Taco Bell, Pizza Hut. Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's are at all-time highs. Some might remember oh, wow. the 2004 documentary Super Size Me, in which director Morgan Spurlock lived exclusively on fast food, which spurred active discussions about the health risks of America's fast food. Anybody would, would, would say right now that you're sick. However, we don't measure for health, we measure for sizes. In almost five. every case, the United States destroys the UK's portion sizes. Yeah, yeah, Winner, no brainer. United States. No brainer. Round three, overall prices. Given okay. that the UK and the US use two different currencies that can fluctuate in value, it can be hard to examine just how much difference there is in food price. I would think from what I've seen, America's cheaper for food, especially with size amounts and everything like that. Because um, we actually, um, on my stream, we compared my dominoes to your dominoes, uh, America dominoes, right? And your prices for pizza stuff, bro, it was like a, a price of a large dominoes was like the price of, no, no, a price of our large was like the price of your small, which is crazy. However, if the earlier section of portion sizes is anything to go on, there is increased opportunity to be served more. But does that translate into how expensive the food actually is? According right. to MyLifeElsewhere.com, the United Kingdom's cost of living average when eating out was higher. Some okay. even on average as 25... Wait, what was the Coca-Cola? Bar Coca-Cola? Oh, it's less? Oh, okay. I need a little bit, though. Interesting. ...when eating out was higher, some even on average as 25% more expensive than the U.S. when eating at an inexpensive restaurant. Oh, wow. But while it might be more expensive to eat out, what about buying your groceries and eating from home? Right. According to Numbeo.com, the cost of these individual items decreases exponentially if you're... Wait, which one's UK, which one's... Which one's UK? Which one's America, bro? Apples. £3.30, £1.80. Surely this has to be UK. We don't get apples for £3. Oh, per kilogram. Oh. You're shopping in the UK. A 500 gram loaf of fresh bread would cost you $2.76 on average in the United States, but right. would only cost $1.31 when exchanged for pounds in the UK. Oh, wow. Overall, consumer prices are 3% lower and grocery prices are a staggering 20% lower. However, restaurant prices are 5% higher than in the United States. Okay. Given how much these percentages lean in the UK's favor, the winner of this round is the United Kingdom. Right, we're winner, cheaper. United Kingdom. Interesting. Round four, variety. The United oh. States has one of the biggest economies in the world. Yeah. It also has larger portion sizes. I'm so jealous of your variety. Like what you guys can get. Like I was doing it on stream. I was ordering some food. 
And th this is all the stuff we get up to on my Twitch, by the way. So if you guys want to check me out live, twitch.tv forward slash LFMG, I'm always doing it. So like, I was ordering food and I was going through my options. And then you guys were saying on my stream, your options. And I was like, bro, it's not even funny. It's not even funny. But and the menu's smaller as well. Have the most food chains and products available. This right. might be a bit unfair, as the United States is 40 times bigger yeah. than the United Kingdom. True. It makes complete sense then that most of the world's largest restaurant chains originated from the US. Right. McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, Starbucks, Domino's, Pizza Hut, just to name a few. So bring your appetite, bring everybody. There are many chains. They, they was all of our chains, by the way. There's no more than that. There's a couple more, but that's about it. But now we're going to go to yours. Like, oh, I really want to try in and out so bad. It's from the United States that haven't made the crossover, however. The United Kingdom does have a few select brands originating. Greg's is good. Region, such as Weatherspoons and Greg's. However, the United States vastly outweighs its competition in large brand availability and origins. God bless the USA. And it's food. This also extends to packaged food as well. There are many sweets and treats from the United States that would need to be exported to the United Kingdom rather than be made by a local factory. Oh, really? So, in the case of the variety of foods available to the average customer, the United States wins out. Winner, United States. Two, two. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. All right, let's see. the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Round five, food safety standards. Uh oh. To clarify, when we say uh -oh. food safety standards, it doesn't just refer to the type of ingredient a food might contain. Okay. Also, the enforced practices a country will partake in to prevent the spread of foodborne illnesses. Okay, the what? The principles of food safety aim to prevent food from becoming contaminated and causing food poisoning. With this in mind, ensuring that food is safe for human consumption is likely the most critical part of the food preparation process. This means we will measure how sanitary oh. food production is in the US and UK and look at the processes involved in creating the food for purchase. Right, this okay. includes the management and care for animals. The United States clearly has a larger population to cater for. It also has farther to travel to get their farm produce. And right. while the food safety practices have been ranked closely on an international stage, there are still areas for concern. The United Kingdom has had a few food-related scares. A notable case includes the 2013 horse meat scandal. I was just about to say that, bro. I was just about to say that. Bro, years ago, it was crazy news that our biggest, one of our biggest, biggest, biggest supermarkets, grocery store, whatever you want to call it, right, was selling horse meat, bro. It was selling horse meat instead of some other meat. Bro, mad. Where foods advertised as beef in the EU contained yep. horse meat. Yep. The horse meat controversy began last month. Horse DNA was found in burgers stocked by some supermarket chains, including Tesco, Iceland, and Lidl. Tesco, yeah, it was Tesco. Luckily, I didn't really have Tesco that much. I'm more of an Asda guy, but I definitely have had Tesco burgers. So, yeah, I've definitely eaten horse. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Today, the beef saga has spread, affecting firms in the UK, Irish Republic, Poland, and France. But this is an outlier in the UK food industry, as locally produced food follows a lot of stringent cleanliness and tracing laws. All cattle are registered at birth, individually verified, and have their movement monitored throughout their entire life. Oh, wow. In addition, British beef requires their country of birth, rearing, and slaughtering to be listed on packages. What? American farmers, on the other hand, have no such obligations. Really? Animal cruelty laws are also much more advanced in the UK than in non-EU countries. As a result, many profit-based practices have been outright banned, including battery cages, sow stalls, and male pig castration. Animal feed what also has stricter rules in the UK. To reduce the risk of transmitting brain disease in chicken, meat and bone meal isn't allowed in poultry feed. 
In addition, some feeds that promote growth in pork and chicken aren't authorized to be used on British farms. Okay. If we're looking at crops, there is also a difference in pesticides used. Since 2016, the UK and EU have banned an insecticide called chlorperifos due to its link to brain damage in children. Well, the Nazi state developed this set of chemicals to be nerve gases. Um, sarin gas is in this family. But after the war, they really Realize, well, this will attack anything with the nervous system, so it's huh? very effective uh, in treating crops and killing insects. Yo, you know, the more and more and more I learn about just everything in life, how are we surviving still? Because apparently everything will mess you up. Like the Coke that I'm drinking right now will have something that will be damaging something, right? So, like, how are we still functioning, bro? From a, you know what I'm saying? Does, does it make sense? But if it drifts, of course, it poisons people. It has the same kind of effect. It is legal to use in the U.S., however. The same goes for neonicotinoids, which were banned in Europe due to concerns over their harm to bees. So neonicotinoids are water-soluble and relatively mobile in the ground. So when it rains, they are easily washed into the groundwater and runoff water. Okay. This means they affect the whole environment and are also absorbed by wildflowers and plants via their roots. The entire landscape becomes toxic for insects. As recently oh, wow. as 2020, the UK banned fungicide chlorothalonil due to concerns about its effect on water quality and the environment. But perhaps the most frequently discussed difference is the use of chlorine to wash chicken. The process is used to decontaminate the meat and kill any bacteria left on the skin before it's sent off for packaging. Wait, they use chlorine? Isn't that what you put in swimming pools? But really, it's a different standard in the United yeah. States. And it's not just chicken. While this is a common practice in the United States, a trade group called the Soil Association argues that chlorine washing simply gives the impression contaminants have been killed. The United Kingdom, by comparison, doesn't allow this practice. They instead uh. rely on rules that are designed to keep the meat as clean as possible through processing. It would oh, okay. yeah, can we skip that video, bro? That was making me feel sick, man. Here, the United Kingdom is further ahead when it comes to the safety of its practices in creating food. Don't say we win. United Kingdom. United States 2, United Kingdom 3. We win! Overall, the United Kingdom beats out the US with a narrow 3-2 to two victory. Yo! Bro, this is probably the first time ever that we can say that UK has won. A food debate, bro. Which is better food? The UK won. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent <laughs> no one. From Watch Mojo. Andy. <laughs> Yo, no one's gonna agree. No one's gonna agree that the UK won with better food. <laughs> But yeah, no, it really interesting video. Funny that UK came out on top, but it was like more like to do with like safety and chemicals and stuff like that. So like, yeah, we know how the US food gets down. Uh, there's so many like different ingredients and chemicals that you guys have that are banned in the UK or whatnot. But taste wise, from what I've heard and what I've seen, I'm pretty sure the US food is way better than the UK and just the different kind of foods you can get. But yeah, interesting video though. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you agree? Does the UK come out on top three times? Too. let me know down below hopefully you guys did enjoy if you did make sure to thumbs up subscribe for more content i'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash l3wg if you guys want to check me out over there i'm also posting early access and extra content on my patreon page link is in the description i'll see you on the next one peace